نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فصلوا على الذكر ان كنتم لا تعلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي يا رب سلم وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم my respected elders young brothers and friends mothers and sisters we will be half qna session on wednesday because of month of ramadan we have altered our time table of our talks so in the month of ramadan qna takes place on sunday after zohar prayer and alhamdulillah for today's session we have received some questions related to the month of ramadan one or two questions are about something else but the majority of the questions are regarding the month of ramadan the fasts <coughs> i previously mentioned the story of qabil and habil the two sons of hadrat adam alayhi salatu wasalam so someone asked the reference what's the reference for this story so the reference is ibn kathir has quoted this story of qabil and habil in his tafsir and he has given the names of the sahaba ikram so you can check there tafsir ibn kathir and you will find the full details regarding this story <coughs> the second question is <coughs> regarding the someone is saying there is a hadith that says that eating seven ajwa dates will stop you from being poisoned however modern science shows that poison can kill you even if you eat ajwa dates isn't the hadith scientifically incorrect no it is not incorrect the hadith is hadith a professor al hawqan hadith be incorrect wa ma yantikun ila hawa'in huwa ila wahyi yuha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when ever prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam utters anything from his tongue is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can we say that the because of scientifically something you know is against the hadith so hadith is incorrect let me tell you let me ask you rather science says fire it burns you know when the fire touches something it burns it but we see in the quran allah says ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was thrown into the fire the fire did not touch him so what are you, what are we going to say the science is wrong so now this hadith let me explain you this the seven ajwa ones that if you eat our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you eat seven ajwas then you won't be poisoned and this person is saying the questioner is saying that science is saying that no it still can kill you and you know can i say something the truth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes the truth of the hadith of prophet according to our yakeen and iman according to our yakeen and iman just keep this in your mind there's another hadith of prophet allah in the hadith of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed many angels to protect our eyes meaning each and every limb is being protected protected you know by the divine protection is there the angels are there to protect us but still we see we find sometimes a person's eyes injured while rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us that there are angels that are protecting you against anything that can cause any damage to your eyes your ears your 
nose, your face, your head. But we sometimes a person he you know he is involved in you know, an accident and his limbs are injured. So are we going to say the hadith is wrong? What happens actually when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes wills? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that you know the, he wants when Allah wants to cause any damage, any injury to someone, then Allah or Almighty orders the angel to step back. The angels, they are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you just step back now because I want to cause him some, some damage. So, whenever a Prophet has said anything about, the, in, in, about anything that, you know, if you do this and this will happen to you, this is according to our yaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevail the, the truth of the hadith according to our yaqeen, how much yaqeen we have. So, the hadith of Prophet is authentic. Uh, the words of Prophet on the basis of the uh, science, we, you know, Ayyazu Billah, how can we say hadith is wrong? The science, can, the science can go wrong, but the hadith of Prophet can never go wrong because the hadith are the, is from the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never ever spoke, you know, with his own will. Whenever he spoke, it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> What is the purpose of fasting? It's very clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amun kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum la'alakum tattakum. Allah is saying that the, the fasts of the month of Ramadan have been prescribed for you as they have been prescribed for the people who are before you so that you become muttaqi, taqwa. Now, remember one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you open the Quran, how this taqwa can be gained in the month of Ramadan. You know, through, through the fasts, you know, we kill our lust desires. This is the basis of the taqwa. You know, we, you know, we refrain from eating and drinking. Okay, so our lust desires become very weak. And this is what the taqwa, you know, the, the, the reality of taqwa is. That, you know, because when a person eats, 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 what happens, the lust desires become you know, strong. Then he wants to look and gaze at the women. You know, then you know, his you know, lust desires will come out. So when a person becomes you know, hungry, you know, he starves in the, uh, while, while, he's, you know, while he's fasting. This is the reality of the taqwa. Because when a person eats more and more, you know, this boosts his, you know, his lust desires. And what happens, the, the fast, it weakens the lust desires. And also when we look at the Quran, there are many other things that can boost taqwa in a person. And that is one of them is, just, uh, there are so many, one of them is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah wa kulu qawlan sadeedah. Oh believers, fear Allah and say what is straight and what is truth. Meaning, correct your speech. Correct your speech. When one corrects his speech, then there are great chances for this believer to gain the taqwa and the piety. When a person does not correct his speech and he does not have control on his tongue, then he will, he will end up committing many, many sins. You know, through the tongue, he will, he will use foul language. You know, through the tongue, he will accuse someone. Through the tongue, he will surrender someone. Through the tongue, he will backbite. You know, through the tongue he will you know he will swear at someone so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you want the taqwa to come into you then correct your 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 speech <clears throat> so the the purpose of the fast is that we gain taqwa piety we, bec we become the god fearing <clears throat> From what age should children start fasting? Well, when children reach the age of puberty, then the fasts become compulsory. But the question here is from what age, like in, for the prayers, our Prophet Sallallahu encouraged the parents, the guardians, that they should train their children from the age of seven. You know, they should, you know, they should train them. The upbringing should be such that when a child reaches the age of seven, you know, he should be you know, he should be encouraged to offer the prayers. And when he reaches the age of 10, then he should be told of if he, if he is not praying. But with regard to the fast, 
And Rasulullah Sallallahu never said, you know, when they are seven or when they are you know, ten, you know, tell them. But the ulama, they say, when a child you feel, when the child is physically strong enough to fast, then you should ask him to fast. Before the age of puberty. But one thing you should remember, if a parents are encouraging the child to fast, say he's eight years old or nine years old, and duration of the fast, you know, middle of the day, the child, if the child says that, you know, I want to eat, I'm too hungry now, I can't bear it. So the parents, the guardian, they should let him eat. I can remember uh, our, uh, when we were in the final year and our Ustaz Muran Islam Haq, uh, as I mentioned before, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his ranks and shower and his rahmah and his grave. He is buried in Madinat al Munawwara in Jannat al Baqi. He passed away in a month of Ramadan. Let me tell another thing. He passed away in Sajda and he is buried in, in, uh, in Jannat al Baqi. And he taught us the Bukhari and a few other books. He, you know, he, he once mentioned to us in the class that once in India uh, a child uh, was fasting and uh, the, you know, the parents encouraged him and he was fasting and middle of the day the child you know it, it was too much for him to fast and he was saying oh, i'm too thirsty i'm too hungry so the parents said no 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 you know uh, just you know make it up and they didn't let they did not let him drink and before the before the mother the child passed away so sometimes you know you need we need to use our senses so if a child is fasting and if he wants to drink if he wants to eat in the middle of the day let him so, so this depends, but the ulama they say, when a child reaches 10 years old, when a child reaches 10 years old, then he should, should, then he should be strictly told that you should fast now. But before that, you know, we should encourage the child to fast. <clears throat> if uh, some, someone sleeps, through Sahri and before going to sleep he the person he made an intention to fast whether his fast will be complete yes you one can make the need of fast from the from the night you know if somebody wants to you know stay asleep you know he doesn't want to wake up and if he wants to make a need at night he can make a need and his fast will be valid you can make a need at night for your fast at night you know when you go to sleep on a and say tomorrow I will be fasting. So this will be enough. Does brushing your teeth break your fast? Well, remember using the toothpaste while fasting, it is makru. Using the toothpaste while fasting it is maku there are chances that it may go through your throat but if somebody is someone is just using you know just the the brush it alone nothing wrong with it but i think the question i want to know brushing teeth meaning using the toothpaste so when you use the toothpaste it is makru to use toothpaste while you are fasting so what should avoid using toothpaste while he's fasting <clears throat> Is it permissible to, to, to take a ghusl or have a bath while fasting? How should one insert water into his nostrils and gargle? Well, while fasting, you are allowed to take a ghusl, you are allowed to have a bath. But if someone is taking a ghusl while he is fasting and his ghusl is far of ghusl, say he went to sleep and he saw a wet dream and ghusl became far upon him, now he's asking how one should insert the water into the nostrils. So remember, we should, when we are fasting and ghusl becomes fard and we want to, uh, because in, in, in ghusl there are three fards, okay? And gargling, rinsing the mouth and inserting water into nostrils and pouring the water over the whole body. So we should make sure while we are taking ghusl, while we are fasting, when we are inserting the water into our nostril, that the water should not reach to the brain. It shouldn't go to the brain. If the water goes to the brain, it will break the roda, the fast. Because from there, from the brain, it has an excess. The water can reach to your stomach. So, and also, when you are rinsing your mouth while you're fasting, don't gargle. 
Just rinse your mouth, but don't gargle, because if you can gargle, there is a possibility the water may go down your throat and it will break your, uh, your, your fast. So while fasting and you are taking your whistle, so when you make sure when you, when you insert water into your nostril, it doesn't go to your brain. If it goes to your brain, it will break your fast. Uh, last question is very common question. Why are the Sahri times uh, different in all the masajid through uh, leads? Why is there not just one same time for your for Sahri? Well, for your information, not leads, but the whole UK. Different times of Sahri, not in you or leads through the whole UK. And can I say something? This ikhtilaf, differences in the Messiah is a rahmat for this Ummah. When we look at the, the beginning, when we look at the beginning times of the Fard prayers, we find differences between the Imams, Imam Shafi Rahmatullahi, Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi. I mean, let me give you an example. According to Imam Shafi Rahmatullahi, the Asr time, you know, it begins a bit earlier. And according to Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, it, it begins a bit later on. So this, you know, this ikhtilaf uh, in these sari times, it's, it's a rahmat of, uh, for the, for the ummat. So we shouldn't, you know, you know, we shouldn't make, uh, like some people make a very big issue, you know, of these, of these things. But anyhow, you know, if you should, you know, you should do your own search, you know, research as well regarding these times as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you knowledge. You know, you should make your own research and then you will come to some conclusions, inshallah. <coughs> so this was the last uh, question of today's Q&A session. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this and make it means of our learning the knowledge. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim Rabbana atina fi dunia hasanatun fi l'akhirati hasanatun wa kina adabun nar Allahumma rabbana tqabal minna inna kanta sami'u l'alim wa tubali inna kanta tubabu al-rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala laqayri khalkihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi wa rahmatika ya Allah